All right, folks, and welcome back to the Don's channel. I am the Don Father, and this is hashtag AFL Calf Chat. Before I start my um, discussion today, I want to give a shout out to AFL Memes on Instagram. You must follow them, guys. They do loads of funny stuff, loads of pictures of, of around the 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 footy world, uh, different players, etc. Stories that are coming out, just all good fun, funny content afl memes that's who you need to check out on instagram they've gave me a shout out as well and i had to return the favor because the guy is a really good guy i've been speaking to him through instagram and respect for helping me out i really do appreciate it so anyway on to my little bit of my well basically my first story it's not really big stories happening today in the footy world uh, midweek there has been debate about mason cox you've seen the duck um Wayne Carey talking about him. Other ex-pros have been weighing in on him. Um, some people have been actually quite ruthless in their judgment of Mason Cox, which I don't agree with. Um, he's basically becoming the whipping boy. You can't blame one player for a whole team losing. I'm sure any Collinwood fans will agree, or anybody in, in, with a half a brain in the footy world would agree, when you lose, you lose as a team. You don't just keep bl bl uh, blaming one player. If he's not good enough, Nathan Buckley wouldn't play him. Um, and as I say, is he the only reason for Collinwood's problems? I think not. Um, Collinwood have lacked any bit of composure this last few weeks. Basically from the Bulldogs game, they struggled to get over the line there. The Bulldogs could have won that. They were destroyed off North Melbourne and then they're beat again at the weekend, which wasn't very good. The Hawks haven't been in great form and Colin would have just crumbled, really. Um, it's the lack of fight and spirit, I think, has been surprising me with Colin Wood. Um, they've been really... Like, when you say, on one hand... Um, Mason Cox is to blame for an awful lot of the, the problems going. I don't think that's fair. I think a lot of the problem with Collingwood is players like Jordan DeGoey, Grundy, um, Jaden Stevenson being out could be a huge blow for them because he ha adds, he really does, from what I've seen anyway, adds a different dimension to the way they play. It allows other players to do different things, such as Jordan DeGoey, but I think they're heavily dependent on players like Jordan DeGoey, Grundy, etc. There is a few guys there that seem to step up and stand tall every week. They could probably be excused from um, saying that they don't play their part in the team there is a lot, maybe it's just a case of other teams are, are, are playing better than them on the day, which I don't think, Collingwood should have the quality that throughout their squad to see them pass the Bulldogs and the Hawks etc, North Melbourne were sitting lower in the ladder, I'm not going to say um, Collingwood should be beating them with ease because they are definitely a team on the rise and um, beating them is not a given um, so and as I think I think North Melbourne are, are going to climb that ladder um, over the next few weeks. Reece Shaw's doing a fantastic job with them. But on the Mason Cox thing again, um, Wayne Carey's opinion people listen to because he is a legend in the game. He knows what he's talking about. He wasn't really ribbing Mason Cox, but he was saying a guy of his height should be winning marks against guys half his size. I cannot uh, argue with that. Um, my biggest insult to Mason Cox would be. When Collingwood's playing, I don't even know Mason Cox is playing. So from his preliminary final where he stood up like tall like a giant and everything he did went right, they're saying he hasn't done anything since. Maybe that game was the worst thing that ever happened to him. If he had a natural progression and didn't have one super game but was getting better every week um, instead of having a real standout game, he's almost a product of his own success. He was so good in that there that he's not able to live up to those heights again. But as I say, my biggest insult I feel to Mason Cox would be, um, I don't even know he's playing. Uh, somebody his size, bear with me here guys, I'm going to explain what I mean. What is he, six, 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 seven? And as uh, Wayne Carey says, somebody his size should not be getting uh, out jumped in the air and making marks by people half his size, not quite half his size, but a good foot or so smaller than him. He doesn't even need to jump. Now, this is where I feel the problem lies. When you've got somebody so big, 
Like, bearing in mind he's coming from a basketball background, they really don't need to jump to grab the ball. It's just thrown to them and they kind of just gather it. I think he ultimately lacks that natural aggression that the younger guys would have because they have to fight for that ball. They have to win that ball in the air. It's not a given that they're going to get it. So they literally have to attack it. And I think Mason Cox doesn't have that natural aggression in his body. Maybe he needs to find some. He's just a very, very nice guy, isn't he? Um, I like Mason Cox. I like the story of Mason Cox. He's come a long, long way from his first game to the um, the AFL. And I, 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 as I say, I don't have anything but respect for him for the, the transition that he's made and what he's trying to do in the game and what Nathan Buckley obviously believes in him. Some people would argue it's just uh, the actions of a desperate man trying to prove that he's good enough. I don't know. But I genuinely believe a lot of the stuff that I see, when he's going for marks, even when they're low, He's not attacking it. Like, Australians have a natural aggression in their body. I feel Americans don't have that... Rah, that cycle rage that you, you need. I, I, I'm not saying he needs to be elbowing people or taking people out of the game, but he does need to have a little bit more fight in him. And I don't feel he has it. He's just too nice. Now, that's where I think he goes wrong in marks. He doesn't attack a mark. If you go in, and as I've been saying over and over and over again why I love this sport, it's because it's a fully full contact sport, fully loaded, full passionate sport where you attack the ball and give it 100% commitment now if you can tell me Mason Cox does that on every time that he attacks the ball for a mark then fair enough, but I'm not seeing it as a neutral, I don't see it. Somebody his size, I have to agree with Wayne Carey, should never be losing the ball to a lesser sized guy because his height is a huge advantage. And that's one of the reasons he was brought. Make no mistake about that. Because of his height, that's why he was brought into the AFL. It's ridiculous how tall he is. And the fact that he's being beat in the air uh, is not good enough. Um, but as I say, going back to my first point, um, my biggest... Um, Insult to Mason Cox is that I don't know Mason Cox is playing. Like, he should be hitting boys. He should be ragdolling small guys about, shouldn't he? He should be throwing them around like they're not even there. But do not blame. The biggest point you need to take from this rant that I'm having right now is you cannot blame one guy for Collingwood not playing well. It's a team sport. You win as a team and you lose as a team. There's so many empty shirts right now in Collingwood not stepping up with the exception of the likes of your Grundies and your Jordan Degotis who seem to be the main names every week. Every time I tune in, uh, they're the top two. There's another two or three maybe you could put in there as well. I'm not going to go on about it. But yes, there's only several stepping up while the rest are just empty shirts so it's not a Mason Cox problem it's a Collingwood problem as I say you win as a team and you lose as a team on to Cunnington who is definitely in for my roughest and toughest mongrel medal I think he's on his fifth fine of the year and all I can say to you is Yes, mate. Well done, big man. He gets stuck in, though. He's got a bit of pride and fight about him. As I say, Mason Cox, look at Cunnington. Don't be as violent, maybe, or as reckless, or maybe as petulant at times as what Cunnington can be. But find a little bit of his guts, his fighting spirit, his toughness. Um, has he got the best don't argue in the league? Uh, I don't know. People are saying, Dusty, Dusty, Dusty. I have to agree with the Dusty thing. Dusty does it. Dusty scores goals. Um, <sighs> he's been doing it from like 18 years old, hasn't he, Dusty? You can't argue with his. Don't argue. It's sensational. But Cunnington is a big unit. He does the dirty work. He puts in the hard yards. He's got the aggression in his body. As I say, I don't see anybody else stepping up for the Don Fowler's roughest and toughest mongrel medal. He is well and truly at top, on the top of the ladder with his fifth fine of the season. That almost cements his place. He's almost he's got one hand on the medal already from, from my channel. So congratulations Cunnington. Keep up the good work brother uh, and you'll have the medal come the end of the season. Congratulations, big fella. Um, but all in all, quite a quiet week um, in terms of off-the-field stories. Um, that was pretty much it. There is um, several other things I would like to talk about, but I won't because I don't think they're stories. They're non-stories. Um, there's going to be loads more stuff to come on the channel this week. I hope. I think because it's been quite a quiet week off the field, I'll be able to get a few more um, reactions done. I'm also going to cover the women's AFLW with my daughter because um, I'm trying to promote the, 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 the women's game as well. It really is well 
um, supported as well the females game and also the amount of women that follow my channel I don't know if it's 50-50 um, from subscribers from my channel female to male but I honestly wouldn't be too far from it the, the AFL is a hugely supported sport by both genders uh, in Australia it really is. Women absolutely love this sport. They they idolise players, their teams, the same way as the men do. And I think that's fantastic. That's why I'm doing AFLW as well, because they deserve a place on the channel. Uh, and it actually does help grow their side of the sport, as we have female... Um, we have the, the, the female league in Northern Ireland as well. Ireland, um, there's women play... Women, female teams as well. Here, so if I can help promote the female side of the game here, that would be fantastic too. So that's what I'll be doing on the channel anyway coming up. And just a quick reminder, do check out AFL Memes on Instagram. That would be absolutely fantastic if you can do that. Real good guy doing funny content on Instagram, and that's what it's all about. I think he's actually followed by Seven Sport and a few of the proper official sports channels in Australia. So he's doing really, really well for himself. Congratulations there. Uh, and also, if I could ask you to... Check out my social media platforms in the section below. Follow me on them. And you can also help sponsor the channel from things like Patreon and my mullet that I'm growing as well. So check that out. Subscribe and put the bell on. Thanks again for tuning in. I am the Dawnfather. That was a good wee chit chat we've had today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you've anything else you'd like to see me reacting to or talk about, please feel free to drop a comment in the section below about that too. Thanks guys and I'll see you soon. Pfft.